If I've said anything about the quality of these being good, I take it back, it's bollocks. Uh, I've had to elongate these holes here so as it matches up, because if I'd have tried to screw those in as they were, it would have cross-threaded everything because they would have gone in at an angle, but now it'll fit on the bars and clamp together properly. You know, it's a good job I don't have affiliate links for these things because I wouldn't sell any. Oh, hang on. Yeah, link in the description. <laughs> the wiring's okay, not fantastic, or the soldering. It'll do, it's, 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 it'll work. I mean, this throttle is so smooth, it's nice, very nice. But I, I really wanted a stop switch. Now, the stop switch will enable me to um, have a separate variable regen on the Kelly controller. I know the domino throttle has actually got a stop switch at the end of the stop, but obviously these are bloody cheap things. These are fantastic for the price. They are absolutely brilliant. I have had to do slightly elongate that one as well, just to make it fit because the holes didn't quite line up, but they do now. So I'm going to write down the wiring on this. I'm not bothered about what they say on the website. I don't care. Um, I'm doing my own wiring. I do my own wiring diagrams. I don't use these connectors so they can all go. And then I'll take that off and I'll sit here and I'll figure out what the wiring is. Bit of a bodge job there in insulating tape. We'll have to remedy that. I always take these apart. Number one, obviously, obviously to check to make sure everything's seated properly and everything's not, nothing's going to fall out. And number two, because I do my own wiring diagrams, I take my own measurements off them to make sure number one that they work and number two, I'm hundred percent on the wires. You know, if it's on the website and they've got a pin out on this and stuff, and I don't care what that says. Because they have been wrong in, in the past, believe it or not. I don't want to be wrong. That's why I check it all myself. As for waterproof... <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. If water gets in, I don't think it'll, it won't hurt. But, you know, you, you can't class it as bloody waterproof. Right, I can leave them loose. Give me a bit of wiggle room. And now I can fit them and start rooting the wire and the reason why I've left these bare here is so as I can slide some heat shrink up there uh, when everything's in place to make it all nice and tidy what are these for? is that for a cable tie? look at that, it's even got a cable tie mounting look I've been 3D printing <laughs> quite a lot recently um, this mudguard, it's not as easy as I thought. I started off with uh, this, which you can see isn't actually round. It's got the segments on it and the same on the inside. Uh, that actually fitted quite well. I decided that a rounded one would be more suitable. So what I did was I did a, a complete sort of semicircle. Uh, to give me the chance of cutting it off at various points wherever I wanted and I decided it was going to go to about here. This one isn't the final version, it's just another mock-up. Now when I'd started doing this print it, it, was, it looked fine to me. I think I spent a total of about two hours sanding and filing that down, trying to get it smooth and everything and I can't. And I haven't got, I needed one of those finger files or something to file it down. Uh, but anyway, I'm doing it again. I'm doing the entire thing and I've also made it a shorter uh, So as it comes into there and it, it lifts up a bit, but it will be the final version. That one was a fail purely because of the, the segments on it uh, That was one that I did that failed. I don't know what happened. I think it lifted of some kind it, it, it yeah, I think that was the one and that one was just a mess. Or was that one the one that lit? Oh, I don't know which one lifted. One of them lifted anyway. So there's those have failed. Here's the original one that should... I can just put this one on, it's not a problem. But I wanted to make my own. I've got to make my own carbon fibre ones. Now what you've got to bear in mind is this is a mould. 
So what I have to do is I have to lay the mould, sorry this isn't the mould, this is the pattern. So what I have to do is get the material and lay it over the top and then after that's done I can take this out and then dispose of it and then I'm left with a mould that I can then lay the stuff on the inside. So the outer, this piece here will then become the inner dimension. So this does look very very close to the wheel but it, it isn't actually, I think this is about 4mm thick so it will raise it 4mm. But I'm going to go through the entire process that I'm going to be using for um, creating uh, carbon fibre parts purely because I want to. If you don't want to watch it, I don't give a shit. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am not building this so as I can do stupid speeds anywhere. I'm not even saying that I'm going to be doing stupid speeds. I'm not even going to be saying I'm not even going to bollocks and shit. I am building it so as it will go stupid speeds but I am not going to be doing stupid speeds on it. This is just an exercise to prove to people what's possible and to give people some insp inspiration of going building on their own um, and making something like they want it to be. You know, it's, the, it's, it's an unlimited world that we live in. You do what you want to do, and, and bollocks to what everybody else thinks. That's what I say. I always have and I always will. So don't don't think I'm going to be tear arsing around the bloody streets on this thing, because I'm not. This is my mobility scooter. I set out to make this thing look as standard as possible. You know, fair enough. <laughs> That's made it a bit different, but the rest of it is still the same. The casing, I haven't had to ex extend it, and that's exactly how I wanted it. Incidentally, I've had a few people who've said, why don't you use bus bars to, to actually uh, run across the bottom of the battery, or the top of the battery as it was. Now, obviously, this is upside down now. If I wanted to put bus bars across there, number one, I've still got to connect on both ends somehow with something which would be silicon wire. Um, there isn't enough room on the ends to actually connect a piece of silicon wire so I couldn't have done that plus which a bus bar would have to be this have to be the thickness of the gap now the gap I've got to have padding top and bottom to stop things from from arcing and, and, and shorting out and to have a bus bar in very close close proximity to that battery would be quite terminal if that actually went through and I ain't going to do it and the bus bar is actually sitting on the bottom of the battery so that was a it, it was a massive hazard to me and no I wasn't prepared to do it and like I say I didn't want to extend it because I want this to be 100% standard looking as much as possible so I've achieved that well actually when I say I've achieved it you'll notice that I've now got handlebar switches <laughs> but they are very very good quality with it it comes with a throttle uh, you get the switch gear which is actually part of the throttle and on this side you've got this piece and then you've got the handlebar grip that goes over there carbon fibre handlebars all the mountings been sorted the wires these aren't tassels these are the wires that go under here which you can see there and they go through there's a hole under here which brings them out into here uh, which I've still got to seal the hole or isolate the hole because it is just literally a hole, there's no grommet or anything to it. Uh, the rest of the stuff comes up through the stem. The power button is connected at the minute so if I turn it on the light comes on. That's going to be the DRL or the daylight running light purely so as I know that the headlights, uh, sorry that the BMS is powered up if I have it on a light switch, I could I could put it on a light switch or something, but if the light switch is switched off, I still don't know if that thing's on. And I need to know that that thing is on or off. So that DRL is going to be on permanent. You hold the button for five seconds. It will beep, but it doesn't at the minute. And then it should go off. There you go. So I've got all this rat's nest of wiring. I've still got to route all these. These have all still got to come up there. So I'm going to have all those wires and also I've got all the Kelly controller wires and I've put all the numbers 
all the numbers are all on there so I know what goes where. This stuff that I'm using to actually cover the wires is just normal. It's this stuff which is like a, I don't know, felt or something like that. Which I got off AliExpress, so I'll, I'll put a link in the description for that stuff as well. It does feel good quality stuff. Uh, it's like it's like the fluffy side of Velcro, Velcro. But I'm going to be using that on all the wiring. So the wiring itself comes out of the chassis down there, and then it comes up here, as you can see, and it goes behind here, and it comes up to this point here to about there. So I drilled a hole for it to come through, and it comes through here. And then it has to go through there. Now it has to do that purely because of the steering. Then it goes up here and then it comes straight out at the top here. So hopefully somehow when I've wired all this up I can then shoe on everything into that tiny little space. Uh, that's not going to be very easy. I also need to reiterate that this is a winter build. This is going to take a long time to do because of things like I'm doing the carbon fibre back, the carbon fibre front, mug guards, I want to make a carbon fibre headlight, I want to make other carbon fibre bits and pieces to make it even lighter. This currently is the same weight as the one that came out of the factory but I want to make it even lighter but I really don't know what other pieces I can make out of carbon fibre because I don't know what my limitations are at the minute purely because I don't know how strong it is until I've actually done the first one they should be very strong but we'll, we'll see, I don't know I have got a lot that I want to make out of carbon fibre ultimately I want to make the swing arm out of carbon fibre but I don't know if I can because of the structural bloody strength of it I don't know yet I think I've explained about the brake brake spacing because of that banjo and you can see the clearance that's probably about two two millimetres I think I've got clearance on that so I had to bring the disc out I couldn't put any spacing on the IS whatever it is post fitting or whatever uh, I had to bring the disc out and not push that in because otherwise it would be rubbing on the tyre so it's coming on I've got all the wiring to do I do like the tassels though I think that would go over down very well <laughs> So I've got to carry on with the wiring now. Actually, I haven't got to carry on with it. I've got to start it. I haven't actually done anything apart from the power button. That's all I've done. But even with a time machine, you have to start with a power button.